It's Hearthstone Grandmasters for the European region. I'm That's Admirable, and I'm joined by Derek Brown. We're heading into our fourth match of the day. It's your boy, Casey, versus your boy, Swids. Uh, but a different story for these two. Uh, similar story, though, is that they both have swapped from what they have been doing the previous weeks. That is true. Both However, players have brought Bomb Warrior for the first two weeks, I believe. Casey yep. had a very good amount of success with it. 2-0 uh, in his first week and then losing a game in his second week now down to 3-1. and one. Whereas Swids, on the other hand, uh, the only player, I believe, left in Europe, 0-4. Oh, well, one of the only players in Grandmasters at all at this point who's still 0-4. Oh, definitely has to start winning some games if he wants to have any chance at all of advancing through to the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, he's he's about to, you know, get right over the third of the way mark. And so I think this right. match for Swids is critical, um, and which is one of the reasons I'm both surprised and not surprised that he has had a pretty major departure uh, from his usual gameplay, which is control. I mean, he is primarily known for being for his expertise in control play, and this week he's gone over to Rogue. It's not that I don't think that this guy can play some aggro decks and beat him up. It's just not what he usually does. Exactly, and this is its specialist format. A lot of players have been going with the decks or classes that they specialize in most heavily in order to play to their strengths. But so far for Swedes, it clearly has not been working, which is why we're seeing a departure from his usual bomb warrior to this fairly standard uh, tempo burglar rogue, as we can see. Oh no, sorry, not the burglar rogue. No, none of the uh, vendetta packages. Just a kind of a good old spirit of the shark tempo version. It's it, interesting. It's an in between of what we've been seeing with yeah, the tempo really rogues is. that are, are more aggressive and the burglar mm -hmm. packages, which are running the evil cable rats and novice engineers. The thing that I really like is that he's got two preps in the deck. I think preparation is still a very good card. It's still two free mana on a spell. Yeah. Remember Innervate? I do. I do. Yeah, I can't wait to go prep, prep Dr. Boom in this game. Well, <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, of course, being facetious. I agree, it's still a pretty good card. But then for Casey on the other <laughs> side, he has a deck which looks very similar to the list that Viper and Bunny Hopper are running. I believe there's a couple of differences. One tracking instead of two, uh, and two deadly shots, I believe, instead of one. Correct. That, that I believe, is the lone difference. Yeah. Uh, and I actually think that the secondary deck changes out uh, different cards. And the tertiary deck uh, also has a bit of a difference with change where it adds in the second copy of tracking right. uh, versus the aggressive decks. So an interesting, interesting take that he has on it, but you know, very, very similar to the Viper slash Bunny Hopper uh, Hunter deck that we've been seeing. And we've been seeing it have some great success. And him being a practice partner of those two, uh, not really much of a surprise. You know how we were just saying Swids is not particularly well practiced as far as we've seen with Rogue? Certainly doesn't look that way. I will be curious to see how this ends up going. Prep Edwin, good start. Mm. Grab an eviscerate, good start. Mm. However, there are two deadly shots in Casey's deck. <laughs> It's nice how things just work out sometimes, isn't it? Casey puts double deadly shot in his deck. He's more likely to draw it, and it's going to be good here. Rewarded for his deck building decisions. As assuming, sorry, that Swids does go for a, a big Edwin early on. Well, that, you don't get this hand and then not go for a big Edwin, I don't think. There are two deadly shots in the deck, and Swids knows this. It's an open deck list format. True story. Remember the aggro discussion we had earlier? Uh, make them have it, I believe, was the uh, well, I mean, exact phrasing. Yeah, but it's a very different situation, right, with Temper Rogue and mm -hmm. Mech Hunter. Temper Rogue has a lot of refill. Mech Hunter has very little. And it also has more sustainability into the late game, I would say. It's not like a, a, an all-in aggro deck where you just have to play your biggest minion and go face it. Like quickly. Do you think this hand is... <laughs> difference? So what are his options? Like, if, if the... If, nah, he well, doesn't have okay. any options. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah, going to yeah. get stuffed. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I guess in this position, he could just, like, backstab coin Edwin. Um, I don't think that he should do that. I think when you pray to the rogue gods and they give you this hand, you don't slap them in the face. So I think you go in. <sighs> yeah, like, the thing is, if, if Hyena hadn't been dropped and he hadn't found the backstab, he might not have gone coin prep at this and all that nonsense as well. I could definitely see him... Uh, using the sap on the Shimmerfly to prevent it trading and getting a Miracle Deadly Shot or something like that. Um, Interesting. In my head, though, this is a coin backstab prep something Edwin turn. I'm just trying so hard not to let the fact that I know Casey has Deadly Shot affect that's, my decision making here. That's what's happening. Wow. Sweets, however, is making the play around it. And so to me, this is a kind of uh, a perspective into both the 
the nod, first and foremost, that Casey has two deadly shots in the deck. Yeah. But secondarily, I feel like this is part of that control instinct from Swids, where he's like, if I just simply wait, I can get a better turn. Uh, like, well, he can put something else on the board, more yeah. importantly. It's like, that that's like the control player mindset 101, is why take a small edge now oh when you can take a bigger edge later? So if we were now to see prep of this Edwin, Deadly Shot is obviously available, but it is off curve. Marked Shot does not kill the Edwin. You have follow up with Novice on the following turn, at least to cycle through your deck. I'm thinking Sap. Casey replays this because Marked Shot is the four. And then next turn you go Novice Coin, Prep, Eviscerate, Edwin. That's a lot of merit. That puts Casey in a position where he needs a small clear to the novice yeah. and to have the deli shot, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. very possible. You open him up to an additional mana, so you add a headhunter's hatchet into the mix of spring ball. Hmm. It also gives him vicious scale hide. <laughs> However, if you just novice now, Oh, so it's oh. with you. And I think that the real crucial difference here is getting another minion in play. Because yep. forcing your opponent to have a two-card combo instead of a one-card combo is worlds apart. Yeah, the issue is the two-card combo is still very wide. Yes, like, it's, it's, still le it's still quite a lot less than that. Whoa. He's just trying to stick a diaphragm the next turn, I think. And yeah, th this this is the turn for Swids. There's no thought about it now. You like my invention. <laughs> Job done. All right. I'll tell you what, though. The evil miscreant makes me think. But Casey has to have the answer. Didn't draw it. Finds the hatchet. Rips the Whoa! deadly shot and misses. He did it so fast. I didn't even see what on earth was going on. But Casey now has to live with a 10-10 smacking him in the face every turn. You don't live with that. You just don't. Try scale high dire frenzying this. Well fought. I concede. Wow, wow. Why take a small edge now when you can get a bigger edge later? That was such... I know, I, I know it was so quick and it came down to a 50-50 at the end, but that was to me such a fascinating microcosm of a game and wider theory in Hearthstone, right? I mean, he took a situation where he could have turned it into, do they have it or not? Right. Into, my opponent not only has to have it, they have to have this other thing. Or when they, they do have it and don't have the other thing, then it's a 50-50. Yeah. I think that is a technical larger edge. However... It's hard to think of all the counterplay iterations that are possible when you go with that way. Yeah. But I do agree that with prep in hand, that he has a more secure version of what he's envisioning with Edwin Van Cleef. He occupied a lot of mana from Casey by yeah. having an animal companion get sapped. He also got a timber wolf out of the deal by being able to poke it by Casey setting up and going, you know what, I might just need to hit something. Yeah. We'll see. And then ultimately getting the payoff when Casey does not find uh, exactly spring paw from that tracking to secure the deadly shot. So my question is, can Casey take the hit and secure it some other way? That that I don't know. Maybe he could have. I but don't think so. I don't think it's worth it. I think you rip the deadly shot. Yeah, I think from that game, the, the, the thing is I'm trying to picture in my head is another universe where Casey does not have the deadly shot in hand. Uh, Swids just rips the Edwin on turn two for a, a huge upside, like a 10-10 he would have got in that position, I think. And we're saying, wow, what a great play. You know, he played or he just made him have it and Casey didn't have it, so he won the game. I still think, I, I think he piloted it well. I think his way of going about it was definitely the best way to try and make sure there was as little chance as possible that the Edwin dies. Because even saving it for a couple turns, he still realized his win condition was Edwin the vast majority of the time. Yeah, it's that's the strength of recognizing the difference, right? I think when you play a lot of normal rogue decks, you don't have Novice Engineer and Evil Cable Rat in them. Like, this has become a pretty recent development. I think a lot of the rogue decks of the past, like, really the early minions are like, they're three cost minions and yeah. Salsi Deckhand. You know, we've had, like, Swashburglar and stuff in the past. But in that situation, a lot of the rogue instinct is just you plow the Edwin down and you go, you better have it right now. Yeah. Swids is just simply recognized, hey, you know what? I have minions in my deck that can just soak up these hits. Why not try to take advantage of that?
Good play. I'm happy. Play. I think that was good stuff from Swids. You know, I'm kind of sad to see a player just get blown out by Edwin. I think that he's had plenty of Hall of Fame worthy performances. He approached it well, though, right? If yes. he just played it out on turn three, he would have instantly lost the game. What else am I going to talk about in that situation? Swids played good, and he got rewarded for it. He didn't have Edwin as the 29th or 30th card in his deck, as has been pretty much the key to a lot of the decks he's played. It's been unlucky. And I've been telling you this for weeks. I've been having people message me and be like, I don't know about Swids. And I'm like, you need to shut up. Because Swids is incredible. I've picked him in almost every playoff that I can think of. You picked him before I could pick him at the last playoffs I was at. I also first picked him, or second picked him in this draft behind Hunter Ace. You did in fantasy draft. Take a look at Casey's tertiary deck. Tell me about it, Derek. This is the anti-rogue. Pretty clearly here for Casey. It's kind of funny given that Deadly Shot won, uh, could have won him the game or was kind of his saving grace, should have been in that last match, but he cuts one of them. The most important things he's adding in are clearly the Rat Trap and the Life Drinkers for a bit of extra heal in the form of Life Drinkers. Uh, and also just the Rat Trap kind of forcing Swids to play two cards a turn for the vast majority of the game. Does that change when you have Prep Sap and Prep Eviscerate? I think it can. It can do. But uh, for this, uh, he does have two copies of Sap, of which many players have won. It's interesting, but I Swift think it's still on the primary, by the way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's the uh, the best. I mean, the other two decks have pretty discreet purposes. Secondary is anti mage. Tertiary is anti warrior. I'm just so happy to see Swids finally get a payoff for making a good play. He's been he's played so well in so many situations. I think he's messed up in some situations too. For sure. But it's because he's been in really tough situations. And I don't think he's used to just getting in bad situations all the time against the elite of the elite. Yeah. Who is? Uh, I guess some of the players now that we're, we have Grandmasters. I digress. I'm happy to see it as well, not only just uh, for Swids, but for the, uh, the French community that he represents. Obviously being the lone French player uh, in Grandmasters, uh, despite there being, in my opinion, a, a wealth of fantastic players uh, from France. It's uh, good to see, hopefully, their luck starting to turn around. Ooh. That's an interesting draw for Casey. So we saw in the matchup uh, that Viper and Bunny Hopper are playing. There was a pretty stark contrast on their hands and their ability to wait with Vicious Scalehide. But we saw Bunny Hopper demonstrate the importance of Vicious Scalehide with Dire Frenzy exactly. Right. And now look at this situation for Swids. Obviously, we can see there is no coin Dire Frenzy. Swids doesn't know that, and I think he's going to prep SI. If he gets hit with coin Dire Frenzy here, he's in such a bad spot. And that's exactly what Casey's represented here as well. Exactly. This was a very nice bluff play. I mean, it was also just a decent play because it cleared something off the board. It's, it's what it represents, though. Yeah. I love to say that the threat of power often is the power of something. But that's a very good example. There we go. That's a very good example. We that's may see it after Casey. Well, yeah, we may see it from Rat Trap as well, right? Where the real power of the card is the threat of what it does rather than the actual six. Casey further hmm. using disruption plays here. I love this from Casey because really? Swids wants to develop three cost minions here. He wants to be playing Waggles pick. Spirit of the Shark, Life Drinker. I don't okay. like leaving up minions, though, especially yeah. not if I'm going to respect Dire Frenzy. Okay, I like this. Uh, yeah, I, the fact that it disrupts two mana in order to be cleared off here with the dagger is, is very important. Because for Casey, he's got the refill. He's got Master's Call. Hmm. Casey wants Swids to actively be spending resources. Now, at the same time, we can see Swids' hand and see he kind of wants to actively be spending resources. He's got Myers and Stable Element. Exactly. But if he doesn't get any damage in the early game, this deck is fairly light on stuff. Myra's Unstable Element is far from the auto-win card that it used to be when uh, the Faldori Striders were in Rogue before rotation from Knights of the Frozen Throne. Um, and I think because of that, he needs to be getting in a little bit more damage at the start of this game. Got to find that opportunity. Stupid one. Ooh! What do you mean, ooh? That's, what do you mean, ooh? That's 16 damage with a life drinker in hand. That is a downwards inflection, ooh. Oh, an I disagree. A hard disagree. You are incorrect. What does this hand do, though? It starts punching Casey in the face. What does Casey do? So what, does he just hit face this turn and then pass? I think that's fine. 
an interesting conclusion. Floating five mana. Ah, it's in rogue. a tempo matchup. Okay. He hmm. has seen one life drinker die. He knows that there's another in the deck, no matter which one was switched to by Casey. This is the curious one for me. So, I don't disagree with this. I was curious if he was going to play for tempo or not here. I think this risks the waggle pick becoming worse. Right. But the waggle pick is, is, in my opinion, never going to be good enough on its own. Like, you have to draw a bunch of cards off Myra's, and so therefore, if you want to draw the cards off Myra's, you have to dump the cards from your hand first. Okay. I see it differently. I feel like Swids isn't under that much pressure. I could be wrong. Well, it's not that he's under pressure of life total. It's just the fact that Myra's puts a clock, or it puts a, a cap on his own resources, a very hard cap on his resources. And if he doesn't get a victory with those quickly, Casey will be able to move, remove those turn after turn. I feel like with Life Drinker and Waggles pick, you have a lot more time than you think you do. Fair enough. I am curious about it, though. There's totally a reason to play minions. It's kind of what they're there for. Whoa! Rat trap off the Shimmer Fly. <laughs> oh, boy. That's pretty sick. I mean, that's a lot of counter pressure represented. Uh, however, uh, you were talking about damage. Uh, this is that. Yeah, I mean, this definitely makes the Life Drinker look a lot better last turn. So let's do some let's do some maths, shall we? That's okay. admirable. So Leroy, Waggle Pick, that's ten. You get a three cost Leroy in hand. Yes. And then another Waggle Pick and a Leroy. That's is another 10, ten. But you're not gonna play that first Leroy immediately. So Probably you, not. You sap whatever Casey Dyer frenzies. That's pretty much the most pressure he gets. Okay. You it wouldn't is, you wouldn't have anything in play, so vicious scale hide plus Dire so Frenzy would not be able to heal on that yeah. turn. You're also not going to be able to sap a Life Drinker, so that's something he needs to account for. He Good can point. assume that Casey's going into Rat Traps and Life Drinkers, which we can see he has. Very, very likely. So you're looking at 18 damage from Leroy when it hits turn 8. And then you have 12 damage from Waggle Picks over those three turns. Casey has played... Well, he's played two copies of Master's Call so far this game, right? So it's all but guaranteed that there's a life drinker in hand, even if it's even just the Casey, one. Casey needs to deal the damage and get the extra health, though, because Casey's at 13, Leroy, Leroy, and two hits the waggle pick represent enough to flat out kill Casey. Now, the thing about it, was that a created rat trap? That one that, of them was. I'm not sure if it was the one he played. If that's the created one, he should play the created one, right? Swids has to think differently. Yes, I absolutely agree. You should play the created one there. I, I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch which one it was that he played. So it was the created one. I'm getting word from right. production. Thank you. Which introduces a little bit of extra mind games for Swids, because if he Leroy's face and hits gets hit with either misdirection, freezing trap, or explosive trap, he gets no damage. The freezing trap is the terrifying one. Isn't the explosive trap the terrifying one? Well, you can offset the explosive with the waggle pick. You just play waggle pick and attack. Oh, right. Oh, sorry. I thought uh, I was thinking if you're going to play Leroy mm. this turn. Uh, yes, sorry. I agree. I agree. For all intents and purposes, I think Swids has this locked. Really? Well, how does Casey counterplay against this? Yeah. I mean, look at how, look at Casey's reaction to the Waggle Pick. Waggle Picks are insane, man. I don't know how you haven't learned this yet. Uh, maybe you're just right. He saps the Life Drinker as well to say, you know what? I don't want any weird double kill command Timberwolf shenanigans He's happening. He's just gonna... Casey's just dead. <gasps> Is that a mark shot? Okay, he can mark shot his own minion. And hit Explosive Trap. Freezing, I was thinking. Nine lives, gets Shimmer Fly. That's no good. Whoa! You were right. Of course I was right. It's the Wackle Pixel 16 damage there, Rock. 16 damage is Waggle Picks. It's a, it's a 4 2 weapon for 4 mana and a Shadow Step to Leroy. It's like 13 cards in one. Swedes did not win that game. He annihilated that game. That's why Waggle Pick is insane. I agree, it's a good card. I just thought, I mean, if he hadn't found the Leroy there off the top, that was nowhere near as much damage. It was very different. It was very, very different. different. However, I mean, it's a Waggle Pick. The card's insane, man.
There's no way Casey popped I, out that much damage. And how does he defend himself? I was just, the life drinkers. I thought that would be enough. I, th I honestly thought that the life drinkers healing for six, that offsets a huge amount of the waggle pick damage. If anything is stuck to the board for Swidge, which I believed he would have to stick something to the board in, able to, in order to win the game, Casey could then go for the rush off of the vicious scale hides to heal him back up. I think without that Leroy, it was looking like a very different game indeed. There's no question about that. Leroy is also a heck of a card. It's a very powerful card, especially with waggle pick. I agree. My goodness. Kind of a stark contrast from the, the Bomb Warrior mirror there, huh? Also just a stark contrast from what we've seen from Swids. It's true. He picks up the match win now. I mean, this is the first match win for Swids, but it's a big match win. Like, he needed this one to start to get something going on his side. I, I, how long? Was that like seven and a half to ten minutes, maybe? It was crazy quick. But then again, it also speaks to how good of a position Casey was before going into this match. Despite losing, he's still only in second place to Psycho in with a, a very good shot to advance through to the finals if his Hunter deck looks uh, like it can turn around. It's kind of interesting. Um, I guess talking about Swids' past weeks, and honestly, I think a lot of his uh, losses have just come to the hand of misfortune. He just has not been able to, to get significant draws. Casey very much was on the receiving end of this just now. Yes. He, there's almost nothing he could have done to win either of these games other than bring a different deck. That's a very weird call to make, and you could argue that everyone could do that. Hit the 50-50 off the, the <laughs> deadly shot line. That's not Casey's control. He tracking for the spring ball in that instance. He yeah, played the Timberwolf. I, 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 I'm trying to think back off like tracking choices, or I'd have to look back at the Mulligan because maybe there was something he could have done better there. But even then, like his starting hand up against uh, Swids in the second match there was looking pretty good like it was strong anti aggro plays he had a whole bunch of removal in the early game to kill off whatever switch was playing uh, i don't know he just didn't get his own aggressive potential off quickly enough and also he didn't find the dire frenzy in order to hit the vicious scale hide yeah just tough just tough what a game all right well uh this is uh something that i was not expecting uh swids wants the interview and my i thought he spoke only french swids can you hear us uh yes i hear you Congratulations on your win. This was a big win for you. Um, a major change from Warrior to Rogue. Talk to me about why you swapped from Warrior to Rogue. Uh, I tried uh, a lot of uh, Warrior, but uh, <laughs> I got uh, I had a lot uh, unlucky. Uh, yeah. I didn't draw boom uh, too much. I, did, I didn't draw boom. I, I lose all, all the brawl, so I pick. Uh, and a wire also um, was bad uh, on the new meta, so I pick Rogue. Uh, so and, uh, I won uh, easily. <laughs> why? Why did you pick Rogue? Why do you think that was the uh, the correct deck to switch to this week um, instead of, for example, Mage, which is also pretty powerful at the moment? Mm, I think Rogue. Um, Bit, bit Hunter and uh, Mage, but it's in favor against Warrior, but I know Warrior is not popular, so mm. I think Rogue was the pick. Um, I, I guess talk to me a bit about uh, just your Grandmaster experience overall. We obviously heard about the bad luck that you've been experiencing, uh, but what's it been like preparing for your matches week to week? Because you are primarily known as a control player. Do you feel like that's something that uh, is potentially a weakness and that you, you have to figure out a way to get around? Mm, yes, my uh, practice par partner say uh, I need to change uh, to play uh, not only control and uh, not to be uh, uh, because because people know I like control so they can uh, they can grid uh, the side deck and, uh, yeah. Well, Swids, I think the swap worked wonderfully for you here in your first match this weekend. Congratulations on your win. Thank you for your time, and I look Thanks. forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks. A much-deserved turn of fortune, I think, there for Swids. I'm, I'm fully... Uh, in agreement with you here that he just has he, he's the player who's just been getting unlucky so far in grandmasters like he said dr boom right at the bottom of his deck a whole bunch of times for the majority of players who have lost so far i think it's 
much more down to bringing the wrong deck or making mistakes with their gameplay. I think it's still arguable that Swid's made a mistake by bringing Bomb Warrior two weeks in a row. Like he was saying, uh, it made him predictable. It allowed players to put a lot of greedy cards in their tertiary decks or even their primary decks uh, to counteract his warrior strategies. And now that he's switching over to the Rogue, he is looking much more on form. I, that was one of the quickest matches that I've seen in a <laughs> long time. And... Uh, I, I just really want to give a big shout out to Swids. I actually first found him by watching Purple when he was streaming in French at the time. Uh, and I found Swids by just filtering out French to find Purple, and I found Swids there. And ever since then, I've been massively impressed. My hat's off to him on that one. First win in Grandmasters, a big win, and an impressive blowout victory for him, which means we have one more match. Hunter Ace taking on Psycho, who is our lone undefeated player next to Fino in European Grandmasters. Don't go away, our fifth and final match. It's coming up.